if you want to maximize your fashion hunting to the fullest one of the main things that you're going to be doing in the game is unlocking every single weapon as layered in order to utilize their looks without having to change your overall stats and in this video what we're going to be taking a look at is how you unlock every single weapon in Iceborne as a layered piece of weapon. Now let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, X here once again, back with another video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In today's video, what we're gonna take a look at is how you can unlock every single weapon in the game as layered in order to maximize your fashion hunting when it comes to Iceborne. The general idea here is you take on the basic steps in unlocking every single weapon in the game as layered and that way you have a much better idea on the journey that you're gonna take on in order to unlock every single layered weapon in the game. So this video is all about giving you the basic information that you need to know about when it comes to fashion hunting and unlocking every single weapon in the game as layered when it comes to Iceborne. Now with all of that being said, what we're gonna take a look at first and foremost is the first basic step that you will take on for the majority of your journey and unlocking every single weapon as layered and that is none other than grinding through the guiding lands. Grinding through the Guiding Lands is gonna be the main bulk of your journey when it comes to unlocking every single weapon in the game as layered to maximize your fashion hunting in Iceborne. In order for you to get every single weapon in the game as layered in the Guiding Lands, you need to be fighting tempered monsters in the game and you need to be getting every single tempered material in the Guiding Lands to unlock every single weapon in this area as layered. So every monster in the Guiding Land that can go into the tempered state will have a tempered material. Once you get that tempered material, go back to the smithy and you'll realize that you've unlocked their weapon as layered. Now this can be a very time consuming task considering how the Guiding Lands works. The Guiding Lands works by spawning certain monsters when you reach a certain level on a particular biome. For example, you won't spawn a Black Veil Valhazak as a tempered monster unless the Rotten region is at level 7. So this can be a very time consuming task, especially if you have to level every single biome at level 7 at one point as a single player. Having said all of that, if you're looking into multiplayer online gameplay, then you might have a much easier time getting every single monster in the game as tempered monsters and getting their tempered materials. All you need to do is you need to look for your friends and see if they have a Guiding Lands area that you need at level 7 in order to spawn certain monsters as tempered. If they do have that, get them to spawn that monster as a tempered monster, get the tempered materials, go back to the smithy, and then you'll unlock the weapons as layered. So long as you're collecting tempered materials in the Guiding Lands, you're continuously going to unlock more and more layered weapons in the game for you to utilize. That's the main focus of the Guiding Lands grind. You need to unlock every single weapon as layered by getting every single tempered materials in the Guiding Land for you to utilize these weapons as layered. So now that you have a better idea as to your journey when it comes to unlocking every single weapon in the game as layered, you might be asking, is every single monster in the game spawning in the Guiding Lands? And the main answer to that is no. There are gonna be some monsters that don't spawn in the Guiding Lands, at least not in the traditional sense. Some of these monsters are gonna be locked in optional quests instead, in order for you to unlock their weapons as layered. These are Shara Ishvalda, Furious Rajang, and Raging Brachydeos. These monsters are only available in optional quests as of right now, with Shara Ishvalda having a bit of an RNG to unlock this monster in the optionals. Now in order for you to get their weapons as layered, what you need to be doing is you need to be hunting for the rarest materials that they have. For Shara Ishvalda, this is the Shara Ishvalda's gem. For Furious Rajang, this is the Rajang's heart. And finally for Raging Brachydeos, this is the Immortal Reactor. Once you get at least one of their rare materials, you'll unlock all of their weapons as layered and you'll be able to craft at least one of them using the rare materials. So keep that in mind, you'll unlock every single weapon in the game as layered once you get the rarest materials from these monsters. Alongside the three monsters in the game that you consider as optional monsters, you also have the two siege monsters in Iceborne called Tarot and Safijiva. Now for Cold Tarot, you only need to get the basic materials from this monster in order to get her weapons as layered because they're actually templated weapons anyway, you only need the basic materials. For Safijiva however, in order for you to unlock both the standard and the awakened version of its weapon as layered, all you have to do is once again get the rarest material from this monster once the siege is available. 
This is none other than the Zionium Crystal. Once you get a Zionium Crystal, you unlock both the Standard and the Awakened version of the weapon as layered for you to utilize in the game. Now that you have a better idea as to what kind of journey you're looking into in Iceborne to unlock every single weapon in the game as layered, we're not gonna look into another part of your journey to unlock every single weapon in the game as layered and I mean every single one of them. The first two parts that I've spoken about are focused on monster weapons. Now this part is gonna be focused on the funny and quirky looking event weapons. Now in this case scenario what you're gonna be focusing on is not so much grinding through the guiding lands or fighting optional and siege monsters. What you're gonna be focusing on are the event quests that Capcom are doing during certain times. Now as of the making of this video we're actually going through a seasonal event event as of right now, meaning all event quests are gonna be available. However, if you're watching past a seasonal event, this could mean that not all event quests in this list are gonna be available for you. So what we're gonna be doing in this part of the video is we're gonna be listing down each individual weapons in the game in terms of event weapons and we're gonna go through each event quest that you need to do in order to unlock these event weapons as layered. I'm gonna split them into two categories, base game weapons and iceborne weapons. So we're gonna go through the base game event weapons first in iceborne and how you unlock them. Let's go ahead and get started. Now as I'm going through this list, I'm only gonna be naming the events. If you can't find them in one difficulty, try the other difficulty. Let's go ahead and start off with the Wyvern Ignition in which you will need to go through every Hunter's Dream and every Hunter's Dream 3. In order to get the Dante Devil Sword, you need to go through Code Red and the Shocking Climax. For the Witcher weapons, so the Witcher Silver Sword and the Zerial, you need to go through the Ancient Legend and once again a Shocking Climax. For the Downy Crake Dual Blades, you need to go through where Sun Meets Moon. For the Bristly Pin Cushion Hammer, the Timberland Troublemakers. For anyone out there who wants the Guy Ball from Final Fantasy XIV, you need to go through Extreme Behemoth and the Shocking Climax. For the First Fleet Lands, you need to go through a Midnight Mayhem. And finally, for anyone out there on the PS4, you can get the Aloy Bow by going through the Proving and Firebreak. Moving on from the base game weapons, let's now take a look at the Iceborne event weapons. To unlock my favorite dual blades which is the wetfish dual blades, you go through a fish to whet your appetite. If you want the frozen spear tuna, trophy fishing, if you want all of the guild palace weapons then you're gonna be going through 50 shades of white. If you want the black eagle charge blade every hunter's dream 3 and if you want the well done hammer, beef is never a mistake. If you want the scavenger's pickaxe, you go through scores of ores. And finally, if you want the Space Lord Super 8 Hammer, you go through a shocking climax. And that's pretty much all of the event weapons in the game as layered in Iceborne. Having said that, if you're not going through any seasonal events as of right now as you're watching this video, then more than likely, not all events are going to be available in the game. This is one of the most annoying things about event quests in the game as of right now. They're actually going through a set schedule. So you will need to keep an eye on the Monster Hunter event page in Capcom's website in order for you to keep an idea as to when these event quests will be available for you to do in order to unlock these event weapons as layered. So once again, unless you're going through a seasonal event, these quests might not be available for you at the time you're watching this video. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about when it comes to unlocking every single weapon in the game as layered. Once again, your main focus is going to be grinding through the guiding lands, but you can also take a break and do the events or even the optional monsters and unlock their weapons as layered. At the end of the day, it's all about being dedicated to the cause and trying to get every single weapon in the game as layered in order for you to unlock them in Iceborne. Now with all of that being said, we do still have more weapons to look forward to for fashion hunting with the arrival of Alatreon the Blazing Black Dragon. Now alongside this, we also have any future title DLC updates coming up in Iceborne that could unlock even more layered weapons in the game and that's gonna be super exciting. We also have the fact that Capcom are now releasing master rank layered armor in the game as of right now to truly maximize your fashion hunting in Iceborne. Fashion hunting is the true end game and no one can tell me otherwise. So that's pretty much your entire journey when it comes to unlocking every single weapon in the game as layered. You go through the grinding lands, you go through optional monsters and siege monsters, and finally, you're gonna be going through event quests. Hopefully this video has been helpful and you have a much better idea as to how you unlock layered weapons in the game in order to maximize your fashion hunting. 
And that is pretty much it for this video, taking a look as to how you unlock every single weapon in the game as layered. If you have any other questions as of right now as to how you unlock certain weapons in the game as layered, please let me know in the comments below what information you need to know about in order for me to assist you in unlocking whatever layered weapons you want in the game. But with all of that being said, if you enjoyed these videos, please consider leaving a like on the video itself and subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that bell icon so you can go ahead and catch up on any future Monster Hunter content that I might be doing or any other games that I might be playing in future. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Onward and upward.